boy, oh boy, have we got a show for you today. You're going to hear some very... Uh, what you're actually about to hear is a, a little piece from this kind of promo uh, with uh, Gary Graver and Orson Welles. And they're talking about something very, very interesting. Uh, are you guys uh, Orson Welles fans? Hello? I don't know why they stop every time I talk to them. Anyway. We're gonna have uh, Gary Graver and Orson. There they go again. Orson Welles talking about something very, very interesting. Then uh, later on in the program, we're going to hear a very, very interesting, uh, very, very interesting uh, audio. Do you guys like Darth Vader out there? Do you guys like Darth Vader? Oh, should have known better than that. Just ask him straight on. I, anytime I ask them the question straight on, they, they just shush up. It's like crickets out there. So, we're going to come across some awesome Darth Vader audio. Some interesting musings about the rain later on. And also... What do, we, what do we got coming up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A special surprise. So, hang on tight. Hang on tight. Are you all going to be hanging on tight? Are you all going to be hanging on tight? Hello? All right. Well, uh, I suppose I shall bid you... Oh, by the way, you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. The uh, UFOs, Gary, we were going to mention, remember, that the unidentified flying objects only appeared after my radio broadcast. And what about that flying object? Ah, what indeed. What am I doing with Oya Kodar's grandfather? Her grandfather died before Howard Hughes. Practically in Picasso's arms, unrepentant and unpunished after a long lifetime of crime. Many of the more distinguished victims of this levitated old crook maintain that, practically speaking, he was so anonymous, he may never even have existed. And here... Ladies and gentlemen, suppose I come right out with it and admit to you now that my old Martian hoax on the radio was... Well, not exactly. A hoax... That there were secret sponsors of that broadcast who were, in fact, some rather influential beings from outer space. You smile. Ten seconds more, Orson. I think they're smiling, Gary, and I'd just like to remind them that it is since that broadcast that there have been in this country alone authenticated sightings. You still think it's a joke? Good. That's the way we want you to feel about it. For now. We'd like to make this little commercial message as modest as possible. You guys are like Sherlock and Watson in here. Pipe detectives. I'm going to drop this, so he doesn't drop his phone in there. So is there a, a leak on the roof or something or how? 
Okay. I will get a trash bag. These guys are doing magic in the uh, bathroom here. There's been water coming down through the ceiling. It's been raining like a banshee out here. Bless you. Careful, that's going to drip on your phone. Look how close that is to his head. I have a smaller bucket over here. Yeah. So I use a smaller yeah. pot. Yes, You guys just don't have the tools, right? Yeah, it makes sense out of the, plumber wood, right? Oh yeah, okay. that wood is pretty soaked up. Okay. Is there any danger of like the water, like you no, know, doing no, crazy stuff to the lights or? Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's okay. good. That's good. That's a brilliant idea. Here, here, let me turn it off. It's going to be hot. That's going to be hot. Turn it on. You were. I'm special. You know, I can hold it. Oh, my God. No way. It's a couple hours like this. If you burned off your fingerprints, no, you're not going it's just a, it's just a pulpy yeah, like. Look, look. How the hell I can you just anything. do that? That's crazy. I don't feel it. I don't no feel way. I don't feel you just got your hand on that light bulb that's just nothing. been on the whole time. Nothing. That's crazy, dude. That's not even hot. Yes, your skin I, isn't even I'm hot. <laughs> this is crazy. You're a mutant. He's a superhero. No, a mutant. <laughs> See? Now you can... Oh, man. Off. This one? Oh, dig it. This for now. Cool, now it'll look like cops now, interrogating me. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank
It's raining outside. The time is now... Uh, what do we got? What do we got? 6.31 p.m. I'm over here at Shada's house. Uh, the producer of Black Pumpkin. She's going to be the producer on this new movie. I don't know if I'm at liberty to talk about the, the name of it yet or not. But we had a great meeting. Uh, and uh, now I'm on my way to a Yachtly Crew photo shoot. So I'm going to see if I can talk to you while I take ways. I don't know how this is going to work, but we might as well try it. Might as well try it. Let's see. Alright, so let's see. We're going to see what we can do here. And, uh, I felt it was a very productive meeting. Adam Ben Sr., he is someone that I used to substitute teach for. And, um, uh, he has grown exponentially over the past few years. Oh, I bet if I turn off the sound, maybe that's the sound of it. Maybe that's what'll happen. Maybe it works better that way. Uh, let's, see, let's get some heat in here. Let's get some heat in here. You know, it's so funny, when I moved out to California from Chicago, I I honestly thought it was going to be 80 degrees every day, and uh, 80 degrees every day, and I would be able to swim at the ocean, even in the winter. And uh, I've learned through the years of living here that that isn't, that really isn't the case. It rains out here just like every, everywhere else. It gets cold out here just like everywhere else. There's a guy named Jake Ducey, Dulcy, who I started getting emails from. And there's something where you could sign up for like a free hypnosis program or something. So he's got some some big some big like motivational box set of all this information, stuff that you you watch each day and it helps you excel in what you know, uh, you know, becoming the better the best version of yourself. Reaching, reaching your goals. <clears throat> be a, be just being a part of all, all the great razzmatazz in life that you would like to be a part of. And so he, they, he uh, debuted like a portion of this uh, particular of this particular new program that he created. It's, uh, I think it's got binaural beats. It's got probably some subliminal messages way back there, but they show you just wonderful pictures and uh, just great, great vibes. And so uh, I saw that the other day and wow, like I just feel like my mind has been reprogrammed. I'm able to kind of view what's going on and just simply look at it and go, you know what? This is part of the process. Even if it's something that seems unfavorable. You know, and, and not so ideal outcome. And not so ideal circumstance. We'll just say that. Where it seems like, uh, you know, we're the patience levels might be low. And, uh, and so I found myself just 
I suppose easing into it more? Letting go of the insistence that something needs to happen at this moment. Allowing for the the cracks to fill in. I'm always trying to get to be, I'm trying to, my, my, my mission is to become a better and better interviewer and be okay with not getting to particular questions that I really, really wanted to ask. Being okay with not, um, playing a particular song that I meant to. Being all right with just, you know, I guess kind of viewing the plan as more of a a net, you know, sort of a, a, a net of sorts where I have those in in the arsenal. I have those in the inventory to pull from should I need them yet not relying on it and not forcing that particular original idea to come about I think that's something that that, uh, can happen to a lot of us it's where you get those bridezillas that's where you get the grumpy directors on set because there's a specific thing that they want to get done and things are just not happening. And I'd love to believe that you can deliver an extraordinary product the more ease and relax, relaxation you have towards something. So, by, by sort of surrendering to that idea of things unfolding the way that they are, and realizing that all the reflections of everything that's going on around you are just, they're just, they're just, they're yourself echoing right back to you. For instance, I'm getting a lot of listeners on this podcast, more, more than I expected and I really want to encourage every single one of you through whatever platform you're listening to if you hear these words right now and you have audio you have information that you want to share with people send it to me send it to me inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com I'll put your song on a radio. <laughs> I'll, I'll put your audio of whatever you're doing. Eating a turkey sandwich? Fine. Uh, reading from the Encyclopedia Britannica? Fine. Reading the ingredients off of a, uh, a, a frozen pizza? Fine. Send it to me. I'll do it. I'll do it. That's what this show is for. It's for you. It's not about me and my all of my supreme wisdom, all of my magical insight, cosmic awareness. It is about you. You. The deep, deeper you. The all that is you the you that stands on the mountaintop and and uh, knows what's going on it knows what direction you're walking in it knows what, what direction you're heading in it knows what's best for you and it delivers it to you all the time, every time. And then there's this you 
that is now left to translate it. They, you, you know, there's this you now who has the choice as to how you are going to respond to what the bigger version of you, you know, how you're going to respond to those gifts. If you're going to look at them as gifts, if you're going to look at them as, as, uh, as, uh, a pain, pain on the neck, if it's going to be pleasant, how you're going to view that road rage. I was reading about the, uh, there's this book about all the uh, MacArthur Award winners, or some of them. It's these interviews with some of these MacArthur Award winners. If you get a chance, look up online sometime. Mac Arthur, M-A-C-A-R-T-H-U-R, Mac Arthur Award. Look that up sometime. One of my teachers, former teacher of mine, Dave Cronenberg, he is a MacArthur Award winner, which is phenomenal. From Columbia College. Word is given out to all kinds of people. Sometimes clowns, sometimes painters, sometimes theatrical folks, sometimes teachers, sometimes scientists. I mean, it just goes and goes and goes. And there's this, I'm reminded of a story where there's this painter who spent hours and hours and hours painting just lines across a canvas. And the reason why they did that was they were trying to paint the purest, most raw line that they could without forethought, without afterthought, without distraction of thinking about something else. They spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. This guy spent hours and hours and hours just painting lines across the canvas. And he just really wanted to get to the most pure, purest form of himself that, that, that he could. And I feel that that's kind of what this podcast is. I'm, I'm really, I'm really, what I'm really aiming for here, my intention is to be as pure of spirit as I guess it is as much as I allow myself to, huh? Rather than thinking, oh, did I just, you know, that thing I just said, is that funny? Did people find that funny? Or do they find that pretentious? Why is that even, why would that even be something that would even enter the brain? I think what, what I'm realizing is I think that kind of mindset comes along with the idea that when I see, I think it's because once I see the attention coming my way, When I see the attention coming my way, that people are starting to listen to the podcast, now I'm like, oh, I'm listening to myself now. Before, before I was really paying attention to the numbers, uh, it was it was just pure, just like we're just getting this is here, this is for me, this is my future self is listening to this. You know, that kind of aspect. So I wasn't trying to garnish any... Yeah, I wasn't playing to anyone. Sometimes now I feel like I'm playing to the audience. And when it gets down to it, when we really get to the base of it all, we die alone. We are the only one in this body that is required to one day just zip, transition over into the next thing. And there are all these memories that we're leaving for ourselves. 
Memories that we're leaving for our relatives, for our children, if we have them. Grandchildren, grand, 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 great grandchildren. And that's the information we're putting out there into the world. And because it echoes and because it boomerangs back to us, the time that we spend with each person is the story that we're giving them to think about. The time that they share with us, you know, they're, they're either sharing pleasant times and really enjoy being around our vibes, or they're in their own heads and they're just, you know, thinking about something else. Um, so what are we leaving with those people? What kind of stories are we leaving with those people? The stories we leave with the people are the stories that we tell them. The way that we act. And I'm sure some I'm sure you probably have people in your life that you think about and you go like just the thought of them you immediately either get oh my god filled with joy you're like oh my god I love hanging out with that person or oh geez this is going to be some work this is going to be some uh, some work uh, because maybe they're always complaining there's always something for them to complain about or there's always something to point out that is not like the other, so to speak. Like Sesame Street, one of these things, one of these things are not like the other. So there could be that mindset where there's the mindset of always pointing out what's different, always pointing out what's not there, always pointing out what should be there, what could be there. Um, but like, you know, like, not necessarily in a constructive way, just sort of like a missing piece kind of way, where it's like, oh yeah, you you really missed this, or you really missed that. One of those kinds of things where like, like, okay, what feels better? What feels better? To talk about something that, you know, like, when people go, Oh, we should have done this, or oh, you know, I meant to do that, or oh, and you know, when I hear that, it kind of like I feel like it kind of degrades the experience that you just had, because then it's like, oh, this was the missing thing. Whereas you might be thinking, oh, that was a perfect experience, that was fine, you know, everything was fine, everything was good. Um, what feels better, pointing out what's not there and what's different, or finding the connections? pointing out what is similar, pointing out what is, you know, uh, helpful, pointing out what is encouraging, pointing out what is empowering, pointing out what is noticing, taking note of where the good vibes are. Do you, here's a question, do you follow your intuition? What do you think is the the more dominant sort of trait with yourself? Do you find yourself mostly following your intuition or mostly overthinking your decisions? Where... You know, does it come easy to you to go, oh, you know what? This feels good right now. I'm going to go do that. Let's try that. I'm going to, let's go do that. Or does it feel good, better for you to go, you know, like when you're faced with a question, would you like to go up to 7-Eleven? And then you sit there and you debate in your mind all of the possible bad things that could happen or what is a better decision to make at that time or 
what you would prefer to do instead. Uh, are you the kind of person who kind of just goes with it? Or do, do you kind of let yourself get in your way? And if you let yourself get in your way, how does that make you feel? Do you like spending that time going over each, you know, arguing with yourself about what you should do instead of that idea? Or does it not feel good? Does it not feel good to uh, to be so tiptoe through the tulips kind of thing? Being careful where you're stepping. Being worried about the landmines. And if it doesn't feel good, what are some things that you can do? What are some things that you could do to sort of hack into that kind of reality experience? What are some things that you can do to, to kind of help scoot you along in directions that are more appealing to you, <clears throat> that make you feel more empowered? You know, is there, are there reasons that you can immediately go to, stories that you can immediately go to in your brain where it did not at all ever work out for you where you followed your intuition? And take a look at those stories. Take a look at those stories. Find out what were surrounding those circumstances. Why, you know, when you, when you, when you decided to give your full attention and full excitement to a particular decision and then things didn't work out or whatnot. What, yeah, what were those circumstances that were surrounding that? What, where were you at? You know, where, where exactly where? The environment. What people were with you? Uh, what music were you listening to? Uh, how are you feeling in that moment in time with yourself and your disposition in life? any motivations uh, and then then just go into that and go okay well that didn't work out because these these you know you might even find Venn diagrams you might find examples where you're like oh my god you know I noticed in all these examples where things went horribly wrong this person was with me or or I was just feeling down in the dumps and so I didn't trust myself or uh, you know I don't know I don't know whatever, whatever it may be Look at those and untie them. Untie them. It's like a balloon, letting a balloon free in the sky. Just like what? What? Uh, what can you do to let go of those and then supplement it with something that is empowering? Something that, you know, maybe a different decision that that could be made next time, where. Uh, you 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 don't you aren't held back by those by those things. I gotta go in now. I might record some of what we got on going on tonight. Uh, we're gonna do some photo shoots here with the Yachtly crew guys. So I could very well be podcasting inside there. So we'll uh, we'll be talking to you later. You're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Hey, Kurt, I'm late to the uh, response table. Sorry, I just saw that you had left me a message. I'm still learning how to use this uh, thing here, whatever it is. <laughs> Anchor FM. Yes, I'm still learning how to use it. So um, I just wanted to say it was actually really nice getting to see you on New Year's Eve. And uh, I hope you do have a great 2019 just stay busy you know and i'm sure you'll know how <laughs> you're good at it <laughs> you're a little hard working sob you are <laughs> at any rate love you Mwah. bye whoa 
check this out, all of you Star Wars enthusiasts. These are the t you're, what you're about to hear here. This is crazy. I, f I just found this on Twitter. This is... So this is the description. Dave Prowse delivered a powerful physical performance as Darth Vader, but James Earl Jones' commanding vocals are what made this legendary character. So what you're about to hear is each of the different voices. So what we got here is uh, this is a scene where, remember that famous scene where Darth Vader is holding up the rebel, like rah, holding him up by the neck? That's this scene right here. And then, uh, and then after that, so first you hear this guy, Dave, and then you'll hear Darth Vader. Next scene, he's to, uh, Darth Vader is talking with Princess Leia. So you'll hear Dave's version, then you'll hear James Earl Jones. Check it out. Quite interesting. And action! Start tearing this ship apart piece by piece until you found those tapes. Find the passengers of this vessel. I want them alive! Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers. I want them alive! member of the Imperial Senate on a diplomatic... You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. And you are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. How cool is that? What do Gregorian chants, Indian, medieval, and 20th century minimalist music have in common? The drone, a part of musical history for thousands of years. It continues to entrance us today. Now, eight sound artists have transmuted their drones into an immersive cinematic experience. Join us for the Drone Cinema Film Festival on Saturday, January 19th at the Highways Performance Space in Santa Monica. A mesmerizing evening with cinematic tapestries woven from the drones of light and sound. For more, visit highwaysperformance.org. All right, folks, I'm taking with you with me to the grocery store. It's raining outside. Going to go get some cat food. The reason why I mention this is that it's a rarity here in Los Angeles for it to rain in this fashion. I rarely talk about the weather, but when I do, it's because uh, it's something that's you know, something worth noting, I think. So, I recently, all right, so we had the, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's do a little recap here. So we had a meeting for the upcoming horror film that I'm working on with Triangle Road Entertainment and Twisted Tall Tales. Those are the production companies in charge of this. Also, Electro Area LA. Those guys might be helping us out with getting some funding. By the way, if any of you are uh, dentists, lawyers, uh, business owners, and, and you've always wanted to be a movie producer, you always wanted to be, you know, executive producer of a movie, which is awesome. And you always thought that that would be a great thing to 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 contribute to financially uh, please send me an email at inspiradoprojecto at gmail.com inspiradoprojecto at gmail.com and that way um, I can we can get things rocking and rolling I can forward you onto my people I can say that now I got my people it's an interesting, it's a, it's a great, it's a great thing to, uh, holy moly, there's a gal who just ran past me. She's wearing shorts. I got a t-shirt, a long, a, a long sleeve shirt. I have a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a, sw a kind of a thick sweater, and a coat. And some gal just ran past wearing shorts in this, in this cold weather. That's just, that's just phenomenal to me. That's phenomenal. That's dedication. She's running in the rain. That's dedication, folks. So, 
we had an interview, uh, or we had a, a, a yeah, we a meeting. We had the meeting about the upcoming horror film, which we'd like to start shooting in March. The whole idea is that we've got to, uh, our plan is to release it Friday the 13th, September 13th, at the Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival, which many of you know I help co- co-organize. I'm one of the founders of. I have the, pl- I have the pleasure of saying I'm a founder of a film festival. So we're going we're gonna to screen it there. That's the awesome thing about having your own film festival. You get to screen your movies at them. <clears throat> I can't wait to meet all the different filmmakers from around the world. There are more filmmakers submitting that we've uh, met met before, met in the past. Uh, the hell? There's some curious things up on the up on the uh, telephone pole, telephone wire. It's interesting. They look like metal birds so I had that meeting then I went off to the Yachtly Crew photo shoot if you want to check out what we did you want to check out the behind the scenes the craziness that that ensued go to check out go to Inspirato Projecto on Instagram look us up Inspirato Projecto and you'll be able to see some of the ridiculous videos that I took while we were snapping these photos the photographer Dustin his last name escapes me right now. Dustin is a, he's uh, the official photographer for Motley Crew. So that was quite a surprise and quite, quite exciting to have him shooting our stuff for Yachtly Crew. He uh, does dynamic photos. Right now he's shooting all this behind the scenes footage for the, there's a movie called The Dirt. I think it's called Dirt, or Dirt or The Dirt, uh, which is based, which is, uh, it's a movie version of the book about Motley Crue. So, I don't know if this is out there and this is public yet, but there'll be five, five new songs that will accompany the soundtrack for Dirt. Five new songs. I found out that Vince Neil is no longer a part of the band. They actually hire him. They, he's a hired... They hire him now to be... to do uh, Motley Crue stuff. He's no longer just like, yeah, I'm Motley Crue. So, the thing that I heard that these guys are working on. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this. I'm going to say it. Uh, hmm. All right. Let's just pretend this is a rumor. They did a version of Like a Virgin. They did their a cover of Like a Virgin by Madonna. That's just a rumor as far as you're concerned. So, feel free to spread that rumor. No, don't spread it. It's just a rumor. It's best not to spread that. But yeah, check out check out the uh, behind the scenes. Check out the behind the scenes if you can. All right, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go look for our cat food now. The uh, temperature inside of, of the grocery store right now is cold, uh, which uh, fits right in line with the coldness of outside. I think they need to put on the, perhaps put on the heat a little bit. That would be, that would be a very welcome choice and wise choice. All right, we can get some of this, some of this canned food here. These cats will be very, very happy. Moments ago, I was going to feed the cats. And uh, I realized, well, we don't, we don't have food up there. We don't have food up there. It took me all day to figure that out. I ended up playing some... Uh, what is What do you call it? Night, Undead Night, Nightmare. The uh, Red Dead Redemption game. I played some of that. 
and helped uh, kill, kill some zombies. I was feeling a little overwhelmed yesterday with some, with some various uh, things, last second things. And so I had to blow off some steam. I had to kill some zombies. That, that helped out a lot, immensely. Let's just say immensely. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll, get back, we'll get back to this later. Oh, by the way, if you notice in any of those videos, those Yachtly Crew videos on in, uh, Inspirato Projecto, if you notice, uh, the sound is taken out. I think Instagram is starting to take the sound out, just like YouTube does. I think if you hear, because we were playing Motley Crew while we were while we were taking photos, and uh, oh, and this is the other thing. Speaking of Yachtly Crew, we're going to be playing February first at the Viper Room, and. Mario Lopez from Saved by the Bell is going to be there. You didn't hear it from me. So, get those tickets now. The booths, there are four of them. Each of those booths, people can rent for $400. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a big price, as far as I'm concerned. But they're all they're all sold out. And uh, Mario Lopez is going to be there. So if you, if you uh, want to dance with them... I want to take some photos of them. That's the place to go. That is the place to go. AC Slater will be cutting it, cutting up a rug, <laughs> cutting up a rug. Um, at uh, at the show. So more revelations. Oh, by the way, Blue Rose Magazine. I have part two coming out. Part two will be coming out, and if you, if you can check out the last podcast, uh, I believe it's the last podcast. I did a tribute to Jimi Hendrix for the song "Little Wing." So check that out if you can. It's fun. It's fun. A lot of fun little nuggets on there. Take care. I had to go up to that store and I got some of these uh, cherry. I got two of them. I'm trying not to eat them like candy. Mmm. You know that eucalyptus taste? Um. I gotta remember that these things have those. So I've been reading that biography, autobiography of Michael Nesmith of the Monkees. And he talked, well, basically he invented MTV. He invented the music video. And his first music video was um, to a song called Rio. And then he, out of people wondering what the heck is this we don't know what to do with this thing he started creating more of them and then he decided to put them all together into basically a movie called elephant parts what's interesting is there's that old uh, there's an old uh, what is it what is it a parable so to speak where I think it's blind either you're they're blind guys or, or people with blind people or people with uh, blindfolds on and they're all feeling an elephant. But different parts of the elephant. One person feels the tusk and they're like, oh, oh there's a snake. Another person feels the side of the elephant. They're like, oh, it's a wall. Um, you know, like each, each one feels something different, but it's all the same thing. So it was a very, really interesting, incredibly interesting uh, philosophical title and so while I was watching it do you remember do you remember uh, the deep thoughts by Jack Handy on Saturday Night Live well check this out check this out Turn up the volume here. Okay, here we go. It's 
time now for more Deep Thoughts by Jack Andy. The difference between a man and a boy is a boy wants to grow up to be a fireman, but a man wants to grow up to be a giant monster fireman. So that was Mike Nesmith doing Jack Handy, Deep Thoughts. So I thought, so I saw, I saw, I saw that, and I realized, oh, wait a second, wait a second. When did Saturday Night Live come out? And did and did Saturday Night Live steal that bit from Mike Nesmith? And I just never knew it. So, sure enough, I. Here's here's the original. Here's what you normally would expect to hear on Saturday Night Live. Here we go. And now, deep thoughts by Jack Handy. One thing vampire children have to be taught early on is don't run with a wooden stake. So. So, okay, so so it got me to wondering, okay, well, what's going on here? What's going on here? And it took me down a rabbit hole. I realized that Jack Handy is a real guy. He's a real dude. He's been writing these books for a long, long time. So I ended up fi- so what do you know? I ended up doing some research and uh, I came across. It's not up here. I don't still. I don't still have it up here. It's a. Uh, it's. It's. It's an interview which came out last year, 2018. An interview with Jack Handy, the real dude. Now, something else I didn't know is that he co-wrote a lot of those skits on Saturday Night Live. Do you remember the uh, Caveman Lawyer? I think he did that one. Hold on. All right, here we go. Oh, unfrozen caveman lawyer. So this guy's still around. He was saying that he had tried on many occasions to send his stuff to Saturday Night Live. Many occasions. And apparently he ended up, uh, Steve Martin ended up being his neighbor. So Steve Martin, since Steve Martin was on Saturday Night Live, put in a good word for him and that's how he got the job on there. He seems like a real good guy. Here's another funny one. Oh, National Lampoon, National Lampoon. We've been, you, I, we talked about National Lampoon here on the podcast. I've got a podcast about it. National Lampoon. You'll see that in my description, I recently switched it to Monty Python. I like to describe this podcast as a, cr- a cross between Alan Watts, National Lampoon, and Dr. Demento. Well, I recently changed it to Monty Python. It's cross between... Alan Watts, Monty Python, and Dr. Demento. So we'll go back and forth between Monty Python and and, uh, National Lampoon. I think the point here is that it's a tribe of humorists. Now that's a term I have never used. So you got the exclusive right there. Humorist. tribe of of humorists so it's crazy so National Lampoon here's another one of his if trees could scream would we be so cavalier about cutting them down we might if they screamed all the time for no good reason 
Wow. Yeah, so he... Uh, he wrote a... A skit. He wrote a skit. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Ah, 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 it's not there. It's not there. It was a skit. It's a skit about a guy who goes to interview to be a part of a railroad company, to be a part of a train, to to uh, <laughs> to drive the train. He goes in there for the interview, and, it, and it's just like a Monty Python skit. And he goes, you know, the guy doing the interviewing, he goes, uh, so, have you ever driven a train? The guy says, no. He goes, would you like to learn how to drive one? You know, I'm, I'm just kind of spitballing here. But he's like, would you like to learn to drive one? He goes, yes. He goes, if you sat in a train, and even if you didn't know how the gears worked, do you think that you could just twiddle the gears and 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 you could just figure out how to make the train work? And the guy goes, yes. Then he goes, uh, would you... Would, if there was something on the train track, would you run it over with the train? Would you do it without hesitation? And the other guy goes, yes. And he goes, um, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, would you allow ants to bite you? And the guy's like, uh, you know, how many? You know, or, or the guy's like, well, what if it was a whole... He's like, uh, yes. And then the other guy's like, well, what if it's a whole bunch? And he goes, well, I'll, I'll do how, whatever it takes. And then another guy busts in. And he goes, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be interviewing. So j- just keep that in mind. Jack Handy is real. He's alive. He's well. He's a good... Man, Charlie Brown. <laughs>